Huh? Mom! The glorious Model O, presented in a small yet sturdy case, sporting a seductive shimmer highlighting the mouse and low weight, a side stating key facts in the face of God, the bottom with even more shimmer and technical specifications. The last side judging you by the word ascend. The top of the case stating the company name. While the bottom plucks their website. Well enough jibber jabber, let's open up this yummy girl. And open! Inside the box we get, well, a mouse. Tiny sack of do not eat. A note from the CEO welcoming you to the quality over RGB. Bit ironic, but okay. A shimmery sticker with the face of Larry, the homeless guy outside of your local supermarket. Another non shimmer mouse sticker. A quick start guide. And lastly, a commercial for the company. Now let's take a look at the mouse. Wow, it is light. I'm going from 150 grams down to 67 grams. Ludicrous difference. It cannot be overstated. Next, the cable, which is by far the best cable I've ever tried on a stock mouse. Unless I force it, I cannot move the mouse via the cable. It feels odd. Closest resemblance would be a shoelace, but lighter. And that's a good thing. The mouse itself is 128 millimeters long, 61 millimeters wide at the front, 59 millimeter in the middle, and 66 millimeter at the back, with a height of 26 millimeters at the front, 37.5 millimeters at the back. The bottom of the mouse sports the honeycomb weight saving design we've seen on the final mouse that will be on pretty much every single mouse in 2019. Bees live in the back as well, although you don't feel them at all. You will have two side buttons and Larry the Homeless on the left side of the mouse. The same honeycomb design on the top with a DPI changer and a very good scroll wheel, although not as defined as I wish it was. Right side with basically nothing, as this is not ambidextrous. The front features the non-removable cable along with perfectly curved buttons. Now let's move to the shabby world of illumination and plug in the mouse for the very first time. Whether you think this is taggy or not is up to you, but the illumination is well done and the RGBs are well defined and very smooth. And as seen in the dark of the night. Furthermore, the mouse features a couple of different lighting modes. Glorious mode. Seamless breathing. Breathing. Single color. Breathing single color. Tail. Rave. Wave. And of course you can turn the lights off or adjust the speed of which the light cycles. Here is the illumination as seen from the back and from the front. I've been told that the illumination is more subtle on the black one, which makes sense as black absorbs the light, whereas the white shell reflects it. I am not usually a fan of RGB as it easily comes off tacky and is very difficult to handle with elegance. But I have to say, in person, this mouse looks all right, and a day I can turn off the RGB altogether, making it a very elegant mouse. At the bottom of the mouse, we notice the DPI RGB light, where the color reflects your current DPI setting. Personally, I prefer Logitech's three light system more, but it works. We also notice the Pixar PMW3360 sensor, which is about as good as it gets and better than your puny human reactions anyway. Furthermore, the mouse sports a 1000 Hz pulling rate, which is for bragging rights because the difference between 500 and 1000 Hz cannot be felt. At least not on your puny 240 Hz monitor. Now, your mousepad of choice may vary. There are a lot of good ones out there to fit every person. Personally, I've used the, in my opinion, only good product to come out of SteelSeries, the QCK Plus Heavy. But I fancied a new pair of underwear this time around just to try something different, and I went for the Cooler Master MP150 Large, which is very different, but also good. It is more of a textured fabric than the QCK smooth cloth and feels far more slippery. 
I can put one above the other. They both feel good, they both feel durable, but they are a very different feel. Even with this slippery mouse pad, the cable cannot move the model O, so S tier for that cable. And now for some ASMR clicks. But many companies make aesthetically pleasing products, but slack on the quality of materials and longevity, though I will not mention any names. As an engineering student, I now know they literally teach you to build for failure after a specific amount of time, so let's inspect the model O. The internal PCB has been coated against the salty air around a sweaty palm and other nasty things that get into your little beehive. I find no flex on the back of the mouse, slight flex on the top, enough flex on the side to actuate a button, and quite some flex on the bottom, though none of this is of any concern as it requires a considerable amount of force. As for the longevity of the arm runs and development of the arm run double click syndrome, we'll just have to wait and see, but the Glorious gets a B plus for build quality. Now, how does it feel to use? In short, fantastic. The low weight gives me far higher precision, reduces fatigue by a tremendous amount, and for the first time in 5 years I have not been able to feel pinky and elbow pain. My old G700 weighs in at 152 grams, has the armor on double click issue after 3 mice with the same issue, and the beloved infinite scroll wheel has oxidized. I have a slight gripe with the height on the right side of the Model O, as I feel a button click on my ring finger, but I believe getting adjusted to a new grip will solve this. For a large handed fellow, this mouse is the best I've ever tried, maybe after the shape of the G403, but I had to return that due to the double click syndrome, the G502 for being too small and placing a button where my thumb rests, and Ninja for the Supreme syndrome. All in all, is this the perfect mouse? I don't know. Like, you have different hands than I do, but the Glorious Model O is, in my opinion, the mouse Tom should have been chasing all of these years. Well done. And if you don't trust me, trust the word of one of the best FPS players on the face of the earth, Saipe. <laughs> and now for the software side of things. Now, I don't really care for the software when it comes to a mouse, unless it's so horrendous that it's unusable. <coughs> Racer synapse. <clears throat> Sorry about that. Open up your favorite search engine. Type in Google and go to google.com. Type in PC Gaming Race and it should be the very top link. PCGamingRace.com. Go to more. Downloads, Glorious Model O download page, and download the Glorious Model O software and firmware update. Once placed where you want it on your PC, extract the zip file, open up the folder, and open the README. The README will contain all the instructions for installing the firmware on the mouse and then the software on your PC. Once installed, you can open up the Tasty UI where you can see an array of functions. You have six programmable buttons on your mouse, which you can make do well, pretty much anything. A macro editor for those cookie clicker players out there. You can save individual profiles and export them, so should your favorite player and or little sister use the same mouse as you, you can download their profile onto your mouse. You have six DPI settings color coded. You can set the XY independently if you're a psychopath. Unfortunately, the mouse does not go below 400 DPI, but this should be sufficient for most, and if not, you can just change your in-game sense. A lighting tab with an array of lighting modes, along with the speed and even the direction of the light. You can change the liftoff distance, the pulling rate, and even the debounce time if you're a bad boy. Anyway, that was the software. It's pretty good. Well, that was it for this time. Thank you for watching my review of the Glorious Model O. And as always, I'll see you guys around tomorrow for another episode of whatever the heck we make. Bye you.